स्टूडेंट्स बात कर रहे हैं हम लोग वी लैंड की या फिर वर्चुअल लैंड की एंड आई एक्सप्लेन टू यू द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वी लैंड एंड हाउ इट हेल्प इन द केस ऑफ इन द केस ऑफ यूजर्स विच आर जियोग्राफिकली डिस्टेंट फ्रॉम ईच अदर हाउ कैन दे स्टिल बी पार्ट ऑफ वन सिंगल वर्चुअल लैंड स्टूडेंट्स विल टॉक अबाउट द मेंबरशिप ऑफ अ वी लैंड हाउ कैन वट स्पेसिफिक करेक्टरिस्टिक्स um that we base our membership of the vlans on how can we group different users together in one particular vlan and group another um, set of users together in the case of the other vlan since there can be multiple criteria or a combination of these criteria for example we can have um interface numbers so different users which have got the different interface numbers can be part of one single vlan we can have um port numbers different uh, users which have the same port numbers they can be part of one vlan since so a particular set of uh link layer addresses or mac addresses or physical addresses um we can combine them together and and we can have ip addresses so we can say that uh, you know a particular ip address from a from us uh, from a particular subnet and we'll talk about that in our later courses they can be combined together in one single vlan and similarly we can have uh, vlans based on ip multicast addresses or a combination of any of these it is completely reliant on and it completely depends upon your system administrator and your company companies uh, it policy as to how you want to create those vlans and that is what's going to define um, how you're going to create or or define the membership of that particular virtual lan after the configuration of of vlan how we we group the stations together in a particular vlan um, then there are three um, techniques or three ways that we use to configure um does the the stations in a vlan the first is called manual the second is called uh, semi automatic and the third one is um automatic so in the first case of manual although you are still using manual is not about you know you actually go and you you start working uh, by reconnecting the physical wiring once again although you are working on a virtual lan in the case of an a manual configuration of a virtual lan you've got a software and um and you actually go and you define a membership criteria and you manually choose the different users that you want to group together in the form of a particular vlan so you do all the um grouping and the membership criteria you do all of that by using uh, the vlan software but you do it manually since in the case of automatic you do it completely automatically so that you, you know you can use the vlan software and there are software is available that allow you to define a rule for example that says that if if um, the port number on a particular machine changes then please change that machine from vlan 1 to vlan 2 so as soon as the port number on on a, on a particular uh, of of a particular uh, user changes that user automatically gets moved from vlan 1 to vlan 2 so you can do it completely automatically without any human intervention and then students uh, the semi automatic is somewhere in between these two you can define rules um in 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 which uh, you know you require human intervention to to group and to redictate or redefine the membership of a particular vlan and you can define some rules which allow you to uh, do this reallocation um automatically so that's your semi automatic somewhere between manual and automatic students so um communication between switches in this particular case in a multi switch backbone each switch must know which station belongs to which particular vlan and then the membership of stations that are connected to all the other switch switches that make up a vlan students so the slide represents this concept you've got a backbone switch in this particular case on the top that's connecting two uh, different switches in this case switch a and switch b and then you've got a uh, vlans 1 2 and 3 and so here's the point that i'm trying to emphasize is that switch a in this particular case the first switch it must know the membership status of the stations that are connected to switch b and the reason for that is because it is sharing a virtual lans with this other switch and switch b vice versa it must know the same about switch a so hence we have got three methods that we normally use um for this particular purpose for the the switches that are sharing the vlans to actually know the status of the the membership status of the of the stations that are connected to the other uh, switch and it is called table maintenance in which each of the switches it uses a particular um, technique called table maintenance to maintain the table and they also ping um, the other switches um, and they based on that they update their tables so when a station needs a broadcast frame 
uh, and it sends it, it to its group members, the switch creates an entry in the table and it records the station membership as well. Uh, so the second one is called the frame tagging, as you can see here. In the case of frame tagging, when a frame is traveling between switches, an extra header gets added to the MAC frame to define the destination VLAN, and the frame tag um, is used by the receiving switch to determine the VLANs um, to the receiving broadcast message. And students, the last one is your time division multiplexing. And as you already know, the, the connection between the switches, it's divided into time shared channels in the case of TDM. And if the total VLANs in a backbone is five, for example, each trunk is divided into five channels. And the traffic that is destined for VLAN one um, travels in channel one. The traffic for VLAN two travels in channel two and so on. And the receiving switch will determine the destination VLAN by checking the particular channel um, from which the frame has arrived on that uh, particular time division multiplexed switch. So students, um, the advantages of the VLANs, as you must have guessed by now, the first one is the reduction of the cost and time. So by creating VLANs, you reduce the cost and you reduce the time by removing the need to physically rewiring uh, and physically removing connections and then reconnecting them. Um, you can create virtual work groups. I gave you an example of um, two offices which are present distant apart, and you can still create a work group, a finance work group between these two offices, although they can be hundreds and thousands of uh, of miles apart. And the last one is security. So as the users in one particular VLAN will have access to the, the users or the other stations which are part of that particular VLAN only. They will have no access to other uh, data of the other VLANs and the same goes for the users of the other VLANs as well. The data is secure in that particular VLAN and so we ensure the security by uh, segregating the users and the work groups into different VLANs as well.